years ago, a young man I knew took a job at a, co a computer company, and early on in his computer company career, a, they had a client that was very upset, so they made him assigned to the client, and his boss took him to the, introduce him to the client, and the client had arranged for a bunch of executives to be sitting around a conference room, and then this client just lambasted, lambasted my friend's company. He said the software was bad, the service was bad, the manuals were bad, and apparently he was just a poet with profanity. He, he cussed this guy out every way for five or ten minutes. Then when he was done, he said, young man, what do you have to say? And he sat down. And my friend stood up and said, well, sir, the problem is, is that your effing morons haven't read the effing manuals. And then he sat down. And apparently there was just stunned silence. And then the executive at the client site laughed, just let out a belly laugh. He says, I know, what are we going to do about it? Well, my friend's boss said to him later, that was so brave, that was so courageous. But my friend said to me later on, it wasn't brave or courageous, because he frankly didn't lose mind if he lost his job. So he was just doing it because he thought that that's what needed to be said, but he didn't feel like he was being courageous because he wasn't that afraid of the consequences. And, you know, we've all heard stories of men who have been brave, who've gotten medals of honor or medals for bravery by charging a machine gun nest. But then when they go home, they're afraid to ever admit they're wrong. They're afraid to admit that they've made a mistake. Or we hear of soldiers who, as they're losing the battle, they fall on their own sword rather than risk the humiliation of being captured by the enemy. And what we see in all of these situations is some things can look courageous, but sometimes the deepest courage we need, the deepest courage we all need, is to face our heart's deepest fears. Some surface fears we can face and it looks courageous, but inside all of us is our heart's deepest fear, and that's where we really need courage. And that's where we're stuck, because we're afraid. We're afraid to take that risk. First John says that perfect love casts out fear. And what does this mean for us when we're dealing with our heart's deepest fear? Perfect love casts out fear. Well, Jesus was on the earth, and he, li he lived a very risky life. He lived outdoors. He was in danger constantly of robbers, of wild animals. He was in danger of the Pharisees who wanted to kill him, the Sadducees, the Herodians who wanted to kill him. And he seemed to just face this courageously, and he seemed to face this without a problem. But then in the Garden of the Gethsemane, when he is going to face the cup of God's wrath, Jesus is fearful. Jesus is scared because he's facing his heart's deepest fear, and that is facing the cup of God's wrath. The cup of wrath that all humanity deserves for all the injustice, the oppression, the violence, the exploitation that all humans have done against each other for millennia. And Jesus was afraid. But you know, what scripture basically says of all the gods in the history of humans, our God, Jesus Christ, is the only God to ever have courage, to have courage to face the deepest fear. And he did it. He did it gracefully. When he was on that cross, he stayed on that cross for us out of love and out of courage. And I think as we see Jesus facing the greatest fear that really any of us should have, which is the fear of the cup of God's wrath, but he does it out of love for us, that I think that can give us all courage because we see that if Jesus took the worst thing that can happen to us, the very worst, if we knew it, it would be our heart's greatest fear. When we see Jesus taking that for us, then we know the little risks that we have, the little things that seem big to us, are really little, and God is letting us face those things to strengthen us, to encourage us, to make us greater. So I guess the question I have for all of us, including me, is, what is our heart's deepest fear? Some of us know what it is, and a lot of us don't know what it is, but what is our heart's greatest fear? And how can we see Jesus taking the greatest fear of, of death, of the cup of God's wrath, for us? How can we see him doing that and let that give us courage so that we can face our heart's greatest fear?